Okay, I think we're rolling. Make sure. Oh, I know how to make sure. <laughs> That's why I have my second device. We're high tech here at the uh, Song Project Studios. <laughs> I hope the uh, the green room staff treated you well this evening. She was very nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, she's she's worth every penny I pay her. <laughs> now if I can find my app here. Okay. So here we are. We're online, aren't we? We are. Hooray. Right. I wasn't sure if it would work sideways. This is the first time doing anything sideways. Oh, there. There we go. Okay. We are on. Cool. So, welcome back to the Song Project. This is episode three. Uh, episode one, we had Paul Abner. Episode two was me ranting about songwriting a little bit. Uh, and episode three is Ashley Pyle. I'm really hey. excited. Did we get like a clap track. <laughs> yeah, I'll be adding in the oh, okay, cool. later. Yeah. Our studio audience has been asked. They're over there. You can see them on the camera. Shh. They've been asked to stay very quiet and to, <laughs> and to not react in any way to your music. That's Blink really fast. Just like how we, it's one of the ways we like to put artists on the spot here. Just by having an audience <laughs> just staring with straight faces. You will never be more uncomfortable right. than here. <laughs> like. um, so, Ashley, we're going to start off with, let's just start off with a song and get right into the music. Yeah. Here's something for you. Cool. So why don't you tell us what you're going to play and... Go for it. I'm gonna play the guitar. No, this one's a. Uh, <laughs> uh, this one's called Bird's Eye View. Um, I don't know. I wrote it up in Alaska, and I played a C9 chord by accident. That's how this song. A C9 happened. Yeah. Nice. With that in mind, Bird's Eye View. Thank you. 
the most beautiful greetings to you and your birds I view. recently too where uh you know ending songs not on the on the root note just because it feels sometimes it feels too pat to do that yeah. you know what i mean like here i go and I'm wrong. My <laughs> one, you know the big one chord at the yeah. end it's kind of nice to just especially uh, it depends on the content of the song you mm -hmm. know but like sometimes ending with that little bit uncertainty there yeah. it's good so what's that song about i don't it's one of my only ones that doesn't really have a set meaning okay. it just I, it sounded cool when i wrote it like it's right. not about a person which is out of my realm of like usual right topic re um yeah i was like vividly remember i was sitting in the guest room of like my birth dad's house up in alaska and just messing around on the guitar so i could get away from the toddlers playing it the <laughs> and i was just like playing with different chords and stuff and I hit like the C9 and I was like, whoa, that's Ooh. cool. <laughs> and I just hung on it for a while and then it just kind of happened. Right, right. It was like, where to go after that? And then, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and do you usually, do you usually start with a chord or a chord progression before like lyrics or? Um, usually like lyrics just happen like out of the blue when I'm, Driving or uh, like but do you usually already there. have yeah. like a, a melody or at a, least a chorus? Chord progression like or... I know what the chorus is going to say or what a verse is going to say before I have to go into something a little more solid and repeatable. Right, right. Um, yeah. And I know what that's kind of going to sound like. I don't. I usually just don't go into it with a melody and go blind. Right, <laughs> like, right, right. Yeah, I've, you know I've. I, I know there's people that write it. All, there's all these different ways to write. Right. I've never been able to really. I've tried it at various times. I've never really been able to just write lyrics and then later yeah. put them to music. I always find that much harder for some <laughs> reason uh, than to write music and then make lyrics to go to it. Yeah. Right? It's, I don't know. It's a challenge, I guess. <laughs> I get it sometime. Uh, I just wanted to say real quick. Uh, before we get started on the interview section, that uh, I do have something set up here so I can monitor the uh, live feed. So if anybody of the, uh, so far we've only got 1.8 million viewers, um, but if any of you wants to ask a question, uh, you can type it in and I, I will see it. Uh, or make a comment, tell us if it sounds horrible. Not that she sounds horrible, but I mean, <laughs> Technically speaking, <laughs> sure I'm sound checking. I say if something sounds off, just throw something. Yeah, that's, no one does it. I no one ever. Just, no one's ever gonna do it. Come on. They look really uncomfortable when yeah. I say that. I'm like, ah. okay. So, um, how did you first come into songwriting? Like, how long ago? What was your um, intro to it? My the, well, the first song that I wrote. Was, uh, I was sitting in a math class as a seventh grader, and I wrote a song called Princess. Okay. <laughs> That's great that you can remember that song. Oh, yeah. And can I, you actually remember it, like yeah. how it goes? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I still play oh. it from time to time in sets and stuff like that. Like, it it doesn't really have, like, a good structure to it. It's just, like, kind of verse, kind of verse, chorus. And right. But it's got, it was written on piano and okay. stuff. So, but, yeah, even that came, like, lyrics, melody, Put it on an instrument when I have time. <laughs> like, right, right. Uh, yeah, no, as I was like growing up, I would write like more poetry kind of okay, stuff. Right. And I just always found that, I mean, like I got good grades in English. And right. so like I got like good comments on my writing and stuff. And so I'd, 
then I played piano for who knows how long, like when I was a kindergartner mm -hmm. growing up. So it, they just met at one point. Right, <laughs> and, right. Yeah. So you were in middle school when you sort of had that moment of like, uh, you know, because there's that kind of shift you go from loving music or, you know, even loving to play music to, oh, I mean, I could make my own, you know, yeah. I could write it myself. And that's sort of that epiphanal moment, you know. I know there was a point where I wanted to quit, too, in middle school. I feel like it was after <laughs> that point, but then my mom cried and I promised I wouldn't. So... <laughs> That's that's where we're at now. <laughs> well, why why did, was you what was your reasoning at the time for wanting to quit? I either I didn't have time or there was something else I wanted to put my time into. I don't even remember at this point. It was I didn't want it anymore, and I right. was super adamant right. on not wanting to. And Do you have a, a a musical family? Um, technically yes. I was like long story short, like I was adopted, and I mean like grew up. My dad plays the radio. That that was okay. his claim to fame. But my birth family, I've learned, is that. Uh, Super musical, like my birth mom played a bunch of instruments and like she played the bass clarinet. Well, oh, nice. And, yeah. Um, and I recently got to go up for her 40th birthday. That's also another song that I can play tonight. Um, <laughs> there's a song that my little brother, who's also pretty musical, uh, and myself wrote for her. Uh -huh. And we got to play it, like he played it on piano and I played it on, t on guitar, and we both wrote verses to it. and helped like do the structure together for the chorus and right, stuff right. And that was really cool but uh i got to join the happy birthday chorus right of right. like the four cousins and whatever that sang and they're like ashley you're a singer you go and i just oh that was so cool that's nice i've always wanted that's the awesome. musical family and well but you uh, you mentioned start you know playing piano from kindergarten that's yeah. which is kind of what prompted that question for me yeah uh so your adoptive parents uh must have at least had some sort of musical yeah. encouragement and whatnot. Oh yeah, they there. knew that my birth mom was musical, and I mean, like you know, like the Mozart makes babies smarter and whatever. I grew right. up on classical. Told my mom I wanted to play the guitar when I was like five years old, so she started me on piano. Right, right. And I didn't actually pick up guitar until I was a high schooler. Right. That's good though, you know. I mean, I think uh, getting that theory back. Yeah, that's yeah. better in a way, and mm -hmm. and and those things like the technical sides of music and theory and things like that are so much easier. To learn on a piano than on a guitar, because mm -hmm. you can see it. It's all laid yeah. out in front of you. All the all twelve notes are right there. It makes it uh, yeah. really easy to sort of get the math of music. Like oh, play the fourth. Okay, I, I think it's, it's like, like four I can notes see apart. It, right. <laughs> <It's not> <laughs> <laughs> oh, the guitar it's a lot more. Yeah. Uh, um, like an open fourth. Or <laughs> so that's interesting that because I, when I asked Paul about his first song, his is like me. I mean, both of us are much older than you. Well, maybe. Two or three years. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, Twenty-one and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Neither of us could remember our first song. Okay, you know? like, yeah. <laughs> we remember <laughs> writing it. I can remember the. I can remember I went to a, a Ramones concert. You know, yeah. and it was this was in the early '80s, and it was like when punk was really big, and you know, punk had this such a do-it-yourself kind of attitude to it. Yeah. That I uh, that really made me just want to be. Uh, I went to the Cedar Ramones, and I was like. I could do that. I could yeah. make my own music, you know. <laughs> and like you, I was raised classical, you yeah. know, and everything. But that's that's cool that you remember it. Um, could you? Would you? Would you play at least like a, just a, yeah, a snippet absolutely. of it? Because I just want to hear yeah. what, what seventh grade Ashley seventh grade me uh, has, uh, has produced. Finish the world I'm in control. 
from the pain of reality And what keeps me sane That finishing world is where I thrive On the bus right to school At home at night Letting go of the rains Flying into the light When that finishing world comes alive Well, that kind of, that's that's well, is that is that like is, is that like, pretty close to what it sounded like? Um, I mean, you, it was piano, but yeah, I kept the melody in the right hand for years of just all my songs. I couldn't right, right. couldn't stop. I couldn't like unmatch it. Right. But yeah, it's just like arpeggios in the left hand and the melody right, in the right, right. and yeah. It, but that but the melody close, yeah. and the words were. Oh all yeah, there. the melody is the exact same. The words are the exact same. Yeah. Little existential me. <laughs> well, so I, many depressing songs as a high schooler. But you so know, great. I mean, I gotta say, I, well, I was probably, I would have been more like ninth grade before, before the first time I heard a song, but uh, uh, categorically, the best seventh grade of song <laughs> I, I think I've ever heard. Well, thank you, yeah. no, <laughs> I mean, that's actually pretty good. Like, daydreamed a lot. And right, yeah, like me too. Yeah. I was like an only child. I rode the bus to school and like, right, didn't have right. many friends because I was like just from like bus to the band room to all my other classes back to the band room and then on the bus at home. Right, so. right. And when middle school, I had this girl who was also in the orchestra with me who, who bullied me. And she once locked me, or didn't lock me, but she shut me in. You know, in the band rooms, they've got those the, the lockers for the instruments. Yeah, the band and it's lockers. the one for like the sousaphone or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, it's miserable. Is there two two players kept a video game system in there? <laughs> an extension cord that they ran under, like there's this lip under it, and so they would like plug it in. You could just, like slick. sit in it and behind right. it. And so like, <laughs> competition days when we were just waiting forever. Right, right. If right. they weren't playing, like the drum line got in right. it. It's just like. Oh, that's awesome. Like, Mario. Wow, that's well, that's really impressive for a song. Yeah. I gotta say, it's. Um, were your, you said you you'd already kind of mentioned that you you were you had changed your mind at some point and were like not gonna do it. And your mom. Yeah. Was. Uh, upset about that so it sounds like you had a pretty encouraging like songwriting yeah, was the, oh yeah like your folks are pretty encouraging it was mostly just piano lessons i just didn't want it anymore oh yeah yeah like sure i'll play music on my own time but i don't want to take lessons anymore they're like well you're not gonna grow is like right right year three of lessons like you <laughs> keep with it just go one more time no okay one more time Right. And I never caught on to that. It's like, you keep saying that, but no. <laughs> right. So did you did you keep with lessons then? Yeah, uh, I kept with piano lessons for about 12 years. Okay. Something like that. And, yeah. So pretty much until you finished high school. Yeah. Right. That was the same for me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't piano, but I had to take uh, cello and bass and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's cool. Um... Who did you play those first songs for? Like just your folks, or did you play them for other um, kids? Or? I don't know if I ever played them for my parents. I would call, like my best friend. I would call my friends on the phone and play them for them on the <laughs> phone. I was always so shy about playing anything for my mm. parents. And there's even like oh, oh, way too many videos of Ashley Pyle, 15 years original song like, <laughs> up on YouTube, and it's woof. Yeah, Man. yeah. <laughs> so I'd like put them out there. I'd like right, want to get right. opinions and stuff, but not from my parents. But not from your parents. Yeah. Why? Why do you think that was? Were you afraid that they wouldn't like it, or? No, they just they hear it enough, anyways. Right. Like, right. right. They can have their opinions on their own right. time. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, you know, sometimes I, I I feel like maybe I was lucky to have grown up before the era where everything was on video. Right, yeah. <laughs> so I don't have to like, look back at that embarrassment oh, of, yeah. my, uh, of my misspent youth. <laughs> um, so to segue into another song, um, what are some of your songwriting inspirations? like? People. Lots and lots about people. Like, I, if they're not love songs, they're dedicated to people and mm -hmm. about other people's situations and... I have a couple that I've like written and given away because they're more contextually 
like written from the point of view of another person's right, relationship right. and it winds up just like being just right. accurate. <laughs> right. Uh, would you say you tend to write like, are you more of a story writer, character yes. writer? Yeah, probably story writer, definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. That. <laughs> when it comes to uh, songwriters who inspire you, what are your, do you have like some certain ones where you're, that you kind of go to? Um, I, for a long while, I mean, like, I never really, like, got on the, hey, I'm going to pick this one artist to, yeah, like, yeah. either, not necessarily, like, try to be them or, like, emulate their style or anything. Right. It's just, I like them. I like listening to their stuff. Right. And then, like, switch to another one. It, but I never really got set on one for more than, like, for an amount of time worth mentioning kind of a thing. Right, right. Like, early me was like Cammy Bradley into the sweeplings. Okay. Um and I mean like me now is I like learning from other local artists. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a like Lucas Brown fan. I'm a Kaylee Goins fan. I'm a gotcha. Eric Patton Chad Moore fan. I'm right, a, right. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um so I I've been thinking of it in terms of like people songwriters that you you like their music up, yeah. but, but are there also some songwriters where I'm just trying I'm trying to like get a get an idea of um, like I have there's people who I would say are really amazing songwriters but I don't really listen to their music all that much yeah but I really get a lot out of it's like John Craigie okay yeah John Craigie like Gregory Allen I stuff probably fall into that category for me like okay. yeah I mean, anyone that I really like covering whenever I, like, do right, covers and right. stuff like that, like, if I can see myself playing it, then, right, like, that's right. why it's usually only, like, one or two songs from any artist, because, like, I can't right, <laughs> picture right. myself entirely as somebody else. Right. It'd be weird to be in a tribute band, wouldn't it? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have oh, to really man. love that band, <laughs> yeah. <dude. laughs> yeah. Um, so, what are you going to play next for us? Um, I got another one that I wrote with uh, my little brother for my birth mom's birthday. Um, it's called Find Myself Again. It's <laughs> We wrote it like two or three days in advance. It's like, we need to get a birthday present. Crap. <laughs> and, like, it wasn't even our idea. Um, his adoptive mom was like, hey, why don't you guys write our song? And we're like, okay, we don't have to spend any money. Right. Let's <laughs> right. do this. Like, we started it. Nice. Like, we both got up on a plane to go to Alaska like at different points and so we just emailed back and forth and I don't know we got most of this from piano and then I was just like okay if you can do it on that I'll do it on this right, right. <laughs> just to cool. play with it yeah and what'd you say it's called uh find myself again find myself again yeah all right I know uh she has like a full like disclaimer behind it she has um like five kids biologically, me and then Clayton was adopted to just three of our own. And this was the first year that all of us were in the same place together. Oh wow. Yeah. So it was, it was really cool, super emotional. I was gonna say it must have been a super emotional experience. Oh, yeah. We we cried a lot. Yeah.
sent me the words to it and I'm like okay I'm gonna <laughs> uh, he like sent me the notes that they were supposed to be too I'm like I'm gonna mess with this but it'll sound good he's like okay that's fine cool. yeah um so let's talk a little bit about uh, about singing um yeah. have you been singing a long time were you um, singing from a young age yes oh, oh yeah I uh, singing along with old cassette tapes of uh like just different worship songs that we were singing in church. Okay. And then still me with making videos of myself and like keeping them. I just really wish I hadn't. <laughs> but I'm happy that I did. Yeah, but, probably uh, in the long run, right? Yeah, no, doing the hand motions and singing along to them. Just on the camera in my room. <laughs> and did you ever take voice lessons? Or? Uh-uh, no. Uh. I just, I don't know, I sang like in public for the first time as a sixth grader, I did a Carrie Underwood song, okay. <laughs> like at the sixth grade talent show, and I was so scared to be in front of all those people that I took my glasses off, handed them to my teacher, and just walked up on stage. Right. Yeah. Oh, so that you couldn't see them as well. Yeah. But, gotcha. but I, I didn't know there was an audience. I actually pretty good. My knees were shaking, and <laughs> and then it was done. <laughs> I, I remember reading um, about the comedian. I think it was. Mitch Hedberg, I think, who uh, he would wear shades on stage because he was he was so he had so much stage fright yeah. that he wanted to perform with his eyes shut. But he thought that'd be weird if he's like just standing there with his yeah. eyes shut. So he just wear shades so he could have his have his eyes closed while he's playing. You know? Yeah, not playing, but uh, you know, talking. But, yeah, 
Because I noticed you've got, like, you've definitely got, like, a really polished voice. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like there's, um, was that something that, like, came about, like, you, did you have, I'm trying to have how I'm making the question. Do you have like a direction you were heading vocal wise, or is that kind of how it just sort of came naturally eventually? Or? Eventually, yes, it kind of just happened that way. But I know that it came from, I mean, as a pianist and as someone who can like hear it, I really appreciate pitch accuracy, mm -hmm. and I like all the fancy stuff. So like, I want to do that with my voice too. So I right, would right. just sit there at the piano and like learn with it. But no, it came from a bunch of years of my mom telling me I sounded really nasally. Oh, okay. And then I was singing through my nose, and so I would sing like in my room, and like just learning like breath control. I would like lie right, down right. and like plug my nose, and like if I could still sing, then right, yeah. right, trying to get it down into the day. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, so tell me if you have, uh, do you have songwriting? Any songwriting like rituals, things that you, you know, okay, it's time for Ashley Pyle to sit down and write a song. What do you do? What's your. Um, I, not really set, but what's been happening lately is that I will think of something like as I like get no time to do anything. So say I'm like at work and I think of this like I'm like making dough and I just have like a bunch of time to just think and. Then I like take a minute, go back on my phone, write down this like like chorus or whatever mm -hmm. I was thinking of, and then I like go to guitar lessons, and then go to like a, the roads are bad, so I go to the Roxy, and I'm just like sitting there at a table, and we haven't started open mic yet, but there's time before it, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just like pull out my guitar at whatever venue, bar, like casual restaurant, that okay. <laughs> even like because I can't really play a lot at home. Okay. Like, just like mom's health and stuff just doesn't allow for a lot of sound. Gotcha. And so gotcha. I like anywhere I am, so I can develop just, like, these other yeah, yeah songwriting on the go. On the go. <laughs> All right, that's interesting. Because yeah, I know a lot of songwriters have like uh, you know, and 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 maybe it'll happen as you as you go go along, but like develop very specific rituals. You know, sort of like baseball players who you know have, have their lucky thing that they yeah. do before a game. You know, like I know a lot of writers who have the same that same kind of thing or something you know like for oh, me yeah. uh, and I always I always want to caution people against having like associating their bad habits with their writing oh, rituals yeah. like for me it used to be when I was a smoker it was uh, you know a cup of coffee and a cigarette yeah and that was like you know that's what I needed when I was writing happened, yeah. you know and that became part of the ritual and uh, that makes it much harder to quit smoking or something. <laughs> true, then you yeah. feel like it's so affecting it's your creative output. Yeah, you know? that's true. Um, but yeah, that was probably the hardest part of like stopping smoking was not having it when I was trying to write a song. Yeah. You know, because it was, oh, man. you know, you get used to, to writing in certain ways, you know. Yeah. And, um, so that's good. That's good that you've got that kind of just write wherever you can. Anywhere, yeah. I have a lot of, I would think I would have a lot of trouble writing in any kind of public. I know a lot and of people. You. A lot of people say that, like, how can you write when there's so much sound going on and when there's right, like, right. There's like a bunch around, of people everywhere? Right. I'm like, I don't know. I'm playing to myself in my little like. I, I can just like sit here like hunched over. And, right, right. Like as long as I can hear it, I'm happy with it. And, I don't know. Huh. The bar song I wrote, like at a bar, like people checking in every five minutes, trying to like get a pit, like see, oh, where are you at? Like you done yet? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Do you have any, uh, do you have favorites? I mean, I'm sure you must have songs of your own that you like better than others. Uh, yeah. Do you have like a favorite song where you're like, like this is my favorite song I've ever written? Do you have any of those um, yet? Hopefully it's always the newest one, right? <laughs> actually, yeah. I'm like, I really like Lion's Den right now. Um, like, kind of go-tos, Bird's Eye View has become my, like, oh gosh, what do I play? That one. Like, right, right. Yeah. Right. And I, I guess there's different criteria too, right? Like there's always, you know, like for me, the songs that I sometimes like to play the best, they aren't necessarily the same ones as the ones where it's like, oh, I know people will like this one, they'll yeah. respond well to this one. Yeah. Uh, those are not always the same songs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, there's some songs that, that I know people 
always like it if I play, but I find it kind of a little bit boring mm -hmm. or something, you know, or maybe I'm just kind of done with it. I'm ready to kind of like move past it, you know? Yeah. Um, I always thought how it must be really bittersweet, I guess, for artists that sort of have, you know, they get famous on a song or on a, you know, an early like set of songs. Though, yeah. and, and even if they do like it, like, you know, there's got to be some part of you that's like when you're 15 years in to be and everyone and you're that. you know every concert you play people are like play that song, play that <laughs> yeah. song. you know like yeah. they're chanting for it i mean i guess like you know you get it's eventually you come around to like the rolling stones or something where they've been playing for 50 some years yeah eventually you just learn to embrace it right it's like yeah, yeah okay satisfaction it is we've been playing <laughs> exactly. the song for 50 yeah. years but you know it's gotta make have fun with it but um there's got to be that point where you're just like, oh, I really don't want to play that one again. Like, yeah. Listen to my new stuff. Yeah. I'm like, well, I play the Flash song. I'm like, oh, do I have to? Really like it? <laughs> so, what's your favorite song right now? That you you said Birds Eye View. Maybe? Yeah, Birds Eye View. Typically, um, that one like just based on what gets requests. I mean, like there was one like Gloves Not Mittens. It's a, like that one's always the one with the most. I fun like. I remember that one. Time. I like that. Uh, I like that image. Yeah. That's that's a nice image. Um, so I'm interested in like, the, what about a song that maybe not, maybe, I don't know if it's your favorite song or whatever, but a song that you would think is like, particularly like the lyrics, let's, let's go with the lyrics, where the lyrics are particularly right on point. Like you feel like I really nailed that one. Do you have some, do you have a song that, that would get into that category? Yeah. Um, I mean, I can say yes while I'm giving an example. <laughs> Um, I don't like. I'm not. There's no part of Lions Den that I'm unhappy with, so I, that it definitely falls into that category. Okay. Plus, it's got like a cool little like major four turnaround, and well, no, it's a major two in the turnaround from the chorus. So it's like got that cool thing in it too. That, right. Like, right. Yeah. And do you have like a favorite line or set of lines from that song? That you um. Or like just the ends of the verses, um, I, they're super similar. The I don't know where I'm going, and I don't know where I don't know when I'll be back. All I've got is twenty dollars, a couple tea bags, and the whole northwest folded in a map. Nice. Like that one. Um, and on the second verse, um, uh, I don't know where this road will lead me, and I don't know when I'll return. I forgot to bring the pictures from that old blue house before we let it burn. Oh, I like that. yeah. I just feel like my mom took a million, it's like a, we argue enough, my parents, you get songs that are coming about them. Right, but, um, right. Like, I, uh, I noticed a while back, like, we just didn't, like, go out on there, like, she has, like, dementia and MS and stuff like that, so I know, like, just those thoughts that come to you that are, like, super right on, that you really, like, they just happen, you're not right. even thinking about it. Um, my mom took a million pictures and had so many home movies of like me growing up and I was like you know like my mom took so many pictures that like it's almost like she was gonna like forget what I looked like and I just stopped and like whoa right, right, right. <laughs> oh gosh that just yeah and so like the pictures thing I can just like that's when I picture me in the basement looking through all those old like hundreds and just like old Kodak pictures just like right going through did you have a blue house that burned down was that a no, real story? No, well, that's the house that we're in now. Okay. So just like, but just like the kind of like imagery, like yeah, the yeah. metaphorical house kind of right, thing. Right. It's like the, um, uh, I know the chorus, like, oh, I know I've made mistakes, uh, but I couldn't tell you when. All I know is it gets hard to make decisions living in the lion's den. Like every time I walk it, like on the bad days and like the bad stretches that last for months, like. You, know, you walk in and anything I say it's gonna turn into an argument right so that's the lion's day yeah so I'm like I just I don't even want to go home like I just right. just not even just don't want to get in a fight today <laughs> like right now that's an interesting uh I've used this I've used the lion's den imagery before too um and you mentioned early in your in your musical history uh doing like worship songs and yeah. like church stuff and uh you know, I had a pretty, my parents weren't like super, like hardcore religious, Yeah. but we went to church every Sunday, I went mm -hmm. to Sunday school every Sunday. Oh, yeah. Um, 
and I've found that uh, like uh, sources like the Bible. And I mean, I studied religion in college too, so like I've read a lot of different religious texts. But yeah, I find that religious uh, mythology in general uh, is such a ripe place mm -hmm. to pull references from. Oh yeah, you know, it's it's because they're so pregnant with meaning you don't have to say, you know lion's den that's all you have to say yeah. and if you share that reference like mm -hmm. if someone shares that frame of reference uh you can say in two words like this whole story yeah you know and uh that's something that uh, and i'm I'm a, I'm a totally irreligious person in my personal life um but i kind of lament the loss of a of, of a kind of a shared cultural mythos mm -hmm. upon which we could draw yeah. and in art that's a it, it's tough it kind of feel it can feel a little groundless now it's like what are our common things like Instagram like right. I mean, what are people yeah. referencing in songs now right because yeah. in, in popular music that used to be really oh, common you gosh, listen to old Johnny yeah. Cash or or mm -hmm. those guys right and there was so much biblical imagery yeah even in non-religious songs uh, because it was this shared language, this poetic language mm -hmm. we all understand the context of. Yeah. And nowadays, it's weird. We don't really have that. You know? I, yeah. I kind of wonder what another generation of songwriters is going to be referencing. Right. You yeah. know, the Kardashians. Oh, <laughs> you know? I, mean, I mean, what is, you know, what is that, what is it we have in common? It's, I guess, is pop culture, really. I don't know if that's good the or bad. The whole trilogy of Kim, Chloe, and Courtney. <laughs> oh, God. And I don't, you know, and I, but the thing is, I don't know it's natural for humans to have, uh, to, to feel like what was in the past was better than what's, yeah. you know, like as we age, that tends to be a human thing, right? Like, oh, so much better back in my day, you know, when we had <laughs> yeah. this thing. And, and I'm sure that, you know, because, because clearly it's not hindering anybody. There's, there's so much amazing music out there. There's amazing songwriters. Absolutely. Uh, there are probably more good songwriters, uh, available to listen to today than at any time in history. Well, that's clearly true. Yeah. Right? Because we can listen to it. There's so many people and it's just But everywhere. there's so many people yeah. and there's so many really talented and really dedicated yeah. people out there. It's awesome. You know, and I, I always, I, I hate it when I hear people really like diss on things like YouTube and how, you know, there's so many like horrible things out there that, that you can hear. Right. And that's true, but there's like so it's many like amazing things. Too, yeah. Like you, you, you know, you you'd be on, you'd go on one of those little, you know, those YouTube journeys, you know, where you're like, watch yeah. this, and then it's in the sidebar, like, oh, I'll click this one, and then I'll click this one. And you end up on some video of somebody singing a song that has, like, 50 views, and it's, like, this amazing music. Yeah. You're like, God, why doesn't this person have a billion views as opposed to, yeah. who's you know, some pop singer that's got a zillion views oh, yeah. on, their, on their video. Uh, so... What's next for us? Uh, I haven't talked about it. It's probably Lion's Den. All right. Yeah. Make sure everything. And I played a set, just like an open mic set at um, Ridgecrest a couple weeks ago, and it was one of the first times I had brought this guitar out. And uh, when it's in tune, apparently it sounds like the harmonics with it are just fantastic mm. and this guy walks up to me and he was like hey like was that a track behind you like where did the cellos come from I'm oh like, wow what <laughs> so i look back at a recording and man it was just so, like the, the harmonics just, just yeah man well, something neat. matched really well so i was like making sure it's just like impeccably in tune um, awesome before you start let me yeah. just say again because we've got a few more people here yeah. on uh if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to type them in. I do have a device over here so I can see what people are uh, saying uh, in any case. All right, so Lion's Den. Yeah. Oh, 
to bring the pictures from my old blue house for you anybody. Oh, I know I made mistakes, oh, 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 but I couldn't tell you when. All I know is it gets hard to make decisions, living Cool turnaround. Yeah. Yeah. How did that come come to you? Just kind of came um, out of nowhere? Or? No, I took it to kind of like workshop it, whatever, to show like jam with my friend Hannah. The, yeah. Like Hannah Sigler and I brought her to the song project like a few months ago, whatever. She's the one who's going to Berkeley. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I actually uh -huh. contacted her to get on here. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, I don't know if she's. She, she, in, she said she's not in town. Right yeah, she's in town for Christmas. She left on the yeah. seventh. But yeah. yeah. Um, but I did want to get her on here because yeah, I really liked her mm -hmm. stuff. I love all of them. God, it's so great. Yeah. But she uh, she recommended like the major four and like to go straight into um, like I wait on all of those lines of the chorus, like to the last one, just go straight into living the lion's den, and then to do the pause on a like a right. cooler. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely nice. It's real kind of, it's got that good polish to it. Yeah. That's cool. I just have to say, I noticed like, so the very first, from the first times you were coming to the song mm -hmm. project um, to now, I, cause you're a huge, I haven't heard you in a really long time, yeah. a huge difference in the playing. Yeah. You know, because I, I, when you first were coming, I think you were just kind of starting off on the guitar. You were much more comfortable on the piano. Yeah, definitely. Um, and the songs were good. You know, still the same stuff. Yeah. But the playing was, was has just gotten so much better. It's yeah, really, thank you. Really compliments it more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was... And I'm trying to like get my, at least my guitar playing just up to, like my lyric writing 
Right, <laughs> like, right. I want to be able to do more so I can, like, be more creative with... Right, right. Like, my words, I can play with them all I want, but I can, like, I'm just, yeah. Right, yeah. That's good. I like that. That's a good tune. And really, really nice to turn around on that chorus. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, I noticed when, uh, yeah, she only came that one time, but mm-hmm. I, uh, I was really taken by her writing. Yeah. Uh, you definitely hear the Berkeley in there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like very, like, and I don't mean that detrimentally at all. But, right, uh, you yeah. Know, but it's clear that she's been Being tra- studying yeah. it formally. You know, there was a lot of, like, you know, a lot of us tend to kind of, when we do arrive there, it's by, you know, by hook or by crook, you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like, it's sort of like, you find us, sort of stumble your way to those things. Yeah. And, uh, boy, if I could go back in time, I would have loved to go, I mean, I'm, it's super expensive to go to Berkeley. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But, Got boy, wouldn't that have been... $10,000 scholarship, still 60000 yep. yeah after that, so... Uh... Yeah. But that would have been amazing to like actually right. like, study songwriting mm-hmm. in college. Oh, oh yeah. Forget about it. Yeah, no, that's so <laughs> cool. Oh man. So we talked a little bit about um, uh, the words and music first thing. We already got. Yeah. Um, let's see. Do you? Okay. Do, this is. This might be. And it's okay if you don't have an answer for this because it's yeah, kind of an uh, uh, abstract question. But okay. like. Do you feel as if you have uh, any kind of overarching theme to your writing? Or is it more just bits and bases here? Is there some... Um, not, like, there's nothing that I'm really specifically trying to convey, like, right. in like a all, philosophy of my, all of a... my writing. No, it's, a lot of it, phew. <laughs> There's been the, just the fair share of breakup songs, just whatever, like, whatever I can convey, I want to. Right. And, like, as long as, like, I like I promise that my songs will at least have meaning. Right. And, you know, I mean, like, Bird's Eye View is just pretty, but, like... Right. Well, but, you know, it's interesting, isn't it, though, when you when you write something that doesn't necessarily have meaning to you, or even it might have meaning to you, but how... Oh, yeah. To the listener, it can have a completely different meaning. Oh yeah, or I mean, something. That's one of my friends that comes up every time I play it, and just like, I mean, like it makes her cry every time. And right. She just like just loves it, and just like, it's the words drastically wrong. The birds right. and the bees song. I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, it's, uh, thank you. <laughs> like, it's not that, but whenever I do have it recorded, absolutely, sure. Right. <laughs> like, right. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of funny how that how that happens, you know, and. and something that you might have written that just like you say just it sounds nice like these words sound good together and then you know it it reminds me or or it makes me think of how humans we're we're such pattern makers you Mm -hmm. know like that's our that's our thing right is making patterns making narrative patterns Mm -hmm. uh and we'll do it from anything Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, <laughs> trying to find patterns and stuff, <laughs> right? Where there, where there is, a, you know, <laughs> yeah. but we'll look for meaning, and and if we're looking for meaning, we'll find it. Yeah, even if it's not necessarily there in the intent. Yeah. and it makes it interesting from the point of view of an artist because uh, you're putting these things out there, and then people are gonna just put whatever meaning it is yeah. like to it, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I guess you could rail about it. Take whatever you want from my songs, just take something. Yeah. But I I I feel like when that bird's eye view when you're saying that, like just that idea of sort of the the bird's eye view imagery to me of like, you know, the observer, Mm -hmm. right? Like I'm out here looking in. Yeah. Looking at the, the world. And I think that that's a you know, that's a position as as writers we often take, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you were talking also about like characters or you know things that you observe. Yeah. Or, or, you're not necessarily that you didn't necessarily experience. You know, like there's some songwriters that are like extremely autobiographical. Yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. everything they write is about their life. Yeah. Um, and I get the feeling that's not you. You don't do that. At times, I do that a lot in like love songs and stuff like that, but. It, typically it's just writing about something else. yeah I have Little Lover which is like the one as I introduce it to people is uh, 
of all the songs I write for other people, this one's one that I wrote about myself. Like, right, right. So it is typically about other people. Yeah. I do remember about Bird's Eye View too. The uh, um, I it was up in Alaska, and I got to go to church that one weekend that I was there, and I hadn't in just months and months and months. And uh, like the pastor was saying something about how um, it wasn't exactly on the topic of homelessness or anything, but like the like you know the people that like panhandlers on the side of the road. Right. Um, that like you see them there so like it's such a routine to see someone like just on your drive home from work that it becomes like routine they become part of the scenery and mm-hmm. you don't notice it and i was like whoa i love that <laughs> and right. so that's where that like in that first verse that's originally where that song came from i wanted to do something with that little like cool thing that i heard so right, it was right. the i'm sitting in a field amongst the greenery i've been here so long and part of the scenery yeah that's a great line <clears throat> yeah yeah like okay now I'm outside where I can't remember how it feels to be inside uh, how it looks how it smells and what it sounds like and like okay now I'm outside what else is outside birds right now I hear the birds I'm trying to like set it up like right really, right huh. like, this, like the senses whatever yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I've, uh, I've, I found that like I had for me I had an, a sort of an epiphanal moment uh, when it came to the lyrics. I, I always, I felt, I used to feel like I was kind of cheating myself or maybe others uh, by writing uh, so imagistically. Like I don't write yeah. linearly at all. Like I don't write like stories, you know what I mean? Or characters even. They're mostly like, my lyrics tend to be kind of more abstract and image imagistic. Yeah. Know? Uh, that's the kind of poetry I like, and uh, but I also felt like, oh, you know, maybe I'm kind of cheating, right? Because I'm not like mm-hmm. being super specific about here's this meaning, you know, and and, and but then you know, like the, the, a lot of the artists that I that I like, like Boney Bear is a good example, mm-hmm. you know, Justin Vernon, uh, the way he writes lyrics, very similar to the way I write lyrics. Yeah. Like, it's you got to dig deep to, to even try and figure out what he's saying. Yeah, and I usually don't even bother. I just like. <laughs> like the sound of it you know yeah. or like the, the way the words flow together is poetic without necessarily having meaning in a way that's uh, concrete but in a way that I can easily like I was saying there's patterns I can mm-hmm. draw from it um, but I remember reading an interview with um, Paul Simon and he was talking he was describing the process of writing songs I think it was like for Graceland or, or Rhythm of Saints or something but um, and he was talking about how a lot of his a lot of his songs would start off as just nonsense babble. Like he would first, he would get the, he would know the the melody. You know, the melody would come to him, and the cadence of the lyrics, hmm. right? So like he would know like the rhythm of the words. Yeah, and just let the words and then fall and then he would just that. say nonsense, you know, like huh. sing nonsense words, and then uh, and then just he if he just. It was way more than I thought because I think of his writing as like super amazing. Mm-hmm. And he's a really great lyric writer, and and yet he said he say that most of his would start off with just like, well, I thought this word sounded cool there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, phew, I feel so much better. Right. If Paul Simon <laughs> could do that, okay, well, yeah, I'm all right. Some of weird ways of putting stuff together. It's like, well, why'd you pick that? But it's really it sound cool. Like, but I do that a lot too. I think about. Uh, the cadence of the words yeah you know like the words have to fit a rhythm like it's always noticeable to me it's like somebody's fitting too many syllables in mm-hmm. or, or trying to it, it sounds off at the yeah time. you know what i mean like there's a certain it's super noticeable in hip-hop like you just like yeah right, there's a bunch of words in general out. but right, like right. if if something's like not the same as something else it has to be right. super structurally like, on right yeah. right although when somebody can really pull that off oh yeah and get that uh, that kilter in, yeah. in their flow, it's really it can be it can take it to another level. Yeah, but like, it could really also be easy, notice, like, easy to not fail. Like the other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, do you have any like upcoming stuff you want to plug um, to the world? Yeah, uh, it's our 1.8 million viewers. Yes. Oh, our... we're up to 1.10 now. Oh, oh sweet. 1.10 one, <laughs> is that a thing? One. We have a billion viewers. Now. Yes, we do. Okay, cool. And our silent studio audience. Um, the, <laughs> uh, tomorrow, no, yeah, January 25th at 
the Big Dipper, just this massive lineup of just super talented people. Um, specifically for the Soul Tree album release show, I uh, sing backup and play flute in that band. It's Shadow Moore's group. Um, you got Haley and the Hitchhikers, Tyler Alai and her crew, uh, got Johnny Miles and Quagada, who's like the best bass player and well, top ranking bass player in Spokane. Nice. Um, yeah, they're super great. And then it's just for Soul Tree's album release. We're super excited. It's finally happening. Um, I believe first Friday I might be at one of the forces. I know that's not really whatever. Uh, February fifth, I'm at the Viking for nice. the Nightlife Network uh, song series. Oh right, yeah. right, cool. It'll be cool. Heck yeah. And February eighth, I'm at Forza South, so a little coffee shop by five thirty, seven thirty p.m. You guys should yeah. make sure you head out there. Oh yeah. And you people in the, the studio audience, you go too. Ridiculous. They have so many cool things going on, but no one knows about them. Nice. Yeah. All right. That's really cool. Um, well, hi, Lanita. How are you? Haven't seen you in a while. Um, okay. So let's see here. What do I got left? Do, 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 do. do you ever write? You, you kind of mentioned this at the beginning, so I guess I, guess I kind of already know the answer, but do you, you, do you ever write songs for specific people and do you tell them about it? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, whether it's like, um, I know, I wish I could remember it like off the top of my head, but I need the lyrics in front of me. Um, I have, yeah. Um, so, like I mentioned, Soul Tree's album release. Like, I've known all the titles of it for a while. And so, for Chad's birthday, I actually put all of the titles into a song. Oh, nice. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's, and the first song that I wrote for him is called Luminary. And I threw that in there as well. So, which is the track song, but yeah. Um, I mean, if I write a song about someone, then I'll definitely tell them about it. And like, my little sister's going through a hard time and stuff, because she was like 15 and emotional. And right, okay. <laughs> like, just developing teenagers. Oh, man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't miss those times. No, those are hard times. <laughs> yeah, but I know I wrote like, what I wish someone would have told me, and mm -hmm. it's like to her for her to listen to right. in her tougher times. Right, right. Yeah. Now, Related to that, have you ever written a song for somebody but definitely did not tell them? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, the, I, like I did tell them about it like eight months after I wrote it and right. stuff. But um, there was a certain songwriter that um, I walked in my first open mic at the Riddler, and I go like I'm just like this awkward. I feel like this high schooler that just walks right. in. Of course, like to a bar, I'm old enough and stuff. And so I walk in, and there's this like, like very nice very pretty man playing the piano and i uh, like uh just playing really like awesome stuff and so he gets off stage and then he's just kind of sitting there he's like hey you know like are you playing tonight kind of thing like yeah i kind of like sit down and say hi and like there's a couple other people and we just talked and like super hit it off right. and like i was super proud of myself i'm like this you you met someone that's right, so right, cool. right. <laughs> being social and like I like wanted to get his number but didn't and so I wrote a song about it and uh, like I played it the next week called it overstepping after uh. that because I uh, <laughs> walked to the bartender and I'm like hey is like is this person here and they're like no like why and uh, I was like oh, I wrote this I wrote this song I just wanted to like kind of like chat with them and stuff they're, oh sweetie he's married and so I did not tell him about that song. Right, right. But right. the next time he heard it, he complimented me on it. Like, right. that's such a cool song. I love the concept behind it. I'm like, thanks. It's a story there. Oh, yeah. Like, eight months later, we got, like, just sitting at the same table or something in a group of people. And I'm like, you know that song from a bit ago? <laughs> and, like, it's the, the song that you like. Like, it's about you. It's, like, super flattered. Oh, yeah. He took it sure. really well. well. It was great. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's that's a cool story. Whoa! Like, <laughs> in the end, I was really relieved that he was not there. <laughs> like, um, okay, so switching gears real quick, uh, the dreaded question that nobody likes to answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Cool. It's and it's your uh, oh, it's your desert island uh, albums. What are you going to take with you? Oh like, gosh! What are your uh, it, it, uh, you know, it's, How many do I get? Um, let's just say you, you've got two albums to listen to for the rest of your life. Oh, God. 
What, um, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna listen to? I let's see. Um, am I alone on this desert island for the rest of my life, or like? Yeah, I mean, it's that just, would influence it. Like, right. No, this would be like. Let's forget the whole desert island thing. Like okay. this is just like. For some reason, <laughs> yeah, it, it has been decided that this is the only two albums you're ever going to listen to again. Okay, cool. Whatever the context. Yeah. Because um, I would pick Soul Trees if I did not have Chad around to like play those for me all the time. Okay, okay. But, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, if I didn't have him, I'd at least want his music. But uh, I am going to go with, so I need something acoustic. I need Suva Sweepling's album. Cause it's, it's always pretty, it's like light, it's not, I have a tendency to listen to sad music a lot. Right, right. So I need something really pretty that's going to like keep me positive. Keep you going, keep you up, right. And I need my garbage hip hop, I need my trap, I need... Interesting. Um, I, let's do, uh, I want the old one and the new one, I want the new one, not the super new one, I want uh, Digital Drug Lord by Black Bear. Okay. Yeah. Never heard of that or the Sweeplings. I don't know who either of those people are. Uh, Kimmy Bradley, but... she's local. Um, did you ever know Ryan Miller? I know that name. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. He moved down to LA. He's an acoustic artist. They were like the Rustics. Okay. Back in that day. Um, I yeah, he plays a bunch of acoustic stuff. But uh, their parents are the worship leaders at my church. Okay. And uh, okay. Kimmy. Um, competed on America's Got Talent and got like Jeff or something like that. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's like super cool. She like beautiful voice and she plays of this uh, dude from like Alabama and okay. they're this duo and just insanely talented. Right, right. Huh, interesting. And then interesting that you I wouldn't have, yeah. I would not have seen that one coming. Yeah. Okay, so what is what's that about? What how did you get into that kind of stuff? Um, honestly, my ex really liked Black Bear, and I had never heard of it before. But it's like, it's he's got a good. I don't. I've never heard him live. I mean, I've heard his acoustic versions of his stuff, which mm -hmm. is nice. But he's got like a bunch of runs thrown in there, and enough so that you know it's him, but it's not the same every time. Um, so the vocal style is really nice and. It's a bunch of like kind of jazzier, like kind of chords, but still electronic. Okay. And yeah. And hip hop, it's like rap. No, it's not rap. It's like it is like vocal and sung the whole time. Okay, like, yeah, there's okay. some more rhythmic parts of it, but there's yeah. still at least kind of oh. melodic. Oh, I'll have to check. I'll have to check both of those yeah. out. Cool. Yeah. Like that. That's one of the only like artists that I can go. Oh man, of their like discology and whatever <laughs> like right yeah right. what kind of stuff i guess we yeah you, you said worship songs like on cassettes that was your thing yeah or, uh, did that my dad had the one beach boys cd that like i can picture in my head um of the annie lennox cd it was walking on broken glass and of the pink yeah. floyd like double disc set it was just another brick in the wall part two uh -huh. Those are the only songs that I listen to from like right, the entire right. Beach Boys, one Annie Lennox, one Pink Floyd. Hated George Michael because that's all my mom listened to when she was playing. Oh, bleeding. right, right. Yeah. And yeah, it just. Annie Lennox, she was great. Oh, yeah. I like the Into the West off the. It's like with the Lord of the Rings soundtrack or something like that. Right. I, oh, I love it. It's still a little high for me, but even the low stuff, it's like it's just a stretch. Right. It's really right. nice thing. Wow. I know. Well, what else we got for you, for us here? Uh, other than one about my sister. Oh yeah, yeah, the, you uh, mentioned that. The That's... vocal range stretch. <laughs> Take this moment real quick to say uh, that uh, next week is, I believe, uh, did I say Lindsay? Yeah, Lindsay Johnson yeah. will be here next week. Uh, she's got a group called, I think, Banna and the O's. Is Banna O and the N's. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. 
but she's she's awesome, and she's been coming to the uh, she's been coming to the songwriting to the song project for a long time. She was uh, she first came long before she was ever doing rock and roll, she was just doing acoustic stuff. So I look forward to that, and that'll be next week for you guys. All right. So this is the song for your sister. What's it called? Um. It's another one that doesn't really have a title. I mean, for the last time I said that, someone gave me a napkin full of song titles and it wound up being Gloves, Not Mittens. So... This is that one. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's a, no, it's not that one. Oh, it's not that one. That was the last time I said I don't have a name for something. Right, right. Was that at the Song Project? Uh, it finally got its name at the Riddler. Okay. Because I kind of had this vague memory of... of people giving you suggestions for a song title. I, I looked for suggestions for a while because yeah. I mean, it just nothing really stood out to me from it. Like, right, right. This is my song, I think I like the way you hold my hand. Like, man, that's so, it's so awkward and long. Right, right. Yeah. So this one, you're not sure what the title is yet? Uh-uh. I mean, the first line in the chorus is what I would give it, but it's too long. So... Seen any? Uh, uh, do you ever listen to Sufjan Stevens? Yeah. <laughs> the Michigan. Check album. out those song titles on uh, Illinois Michigan. Or, or Michigan. Yeah. There's some really long freaking song titles. For the for all the poor and fatherless and Ipsilanti, I love right. that because I used right. to live there. Like, right. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure it was the best strategy because it makes it really hard to refer to them because I can never remember them, and I love that. Like, but it's got the like, town names like, in it, like, so. It, like, but like Illinois. Some of those are so long and like there's just, you know, they, and they don't seem to necessarily relate to the songs very, very hard. Yeah. So it just makes it like, I'm like, oh, you know that, that one song? Like, it's easy yeah. to say, Chicago. Okay, right. that's an easy one. But then it's like, well, what about like the, the predatory wasps of whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> and it's like, I don't, I can't remember what that song sounds like, you know, but I know if I hear it, I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, all right, so. What's the working title? Um, maybe like bombs in your head. Okay. This all sounds so abrasive. <laughs> <laughs> it's it does it's not a working title. It doesn't work. Did so. it cut your fucking throat? Is that what it's called? <laughs> Acoustic rendition of a metal song. <laughs> Hold on tight to me 
If the path seems far too rough and if the road seems too rocky, you can hold on tight to me. If your mind says you're not good enough, I'll tell you the truth, you see. You can hold on to me, yeah. Or oh, I'll quiet all the loud just as long as you agree that you will not become me. Oh, I've seen this all before and I know all that you can be Cause you're allowed to feel like bombs are going off in your head You're allowed to want to feel the other way instead You're allowed to replace and retrace the steps you took to get you where you stand But baby, please don't hurt yourself again Clap, people. <laughs> I see you, Bill. No clapping. And the hush falls on the crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's a nice one. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. She just she freaks out so easily over the stupidest stuff. Not actually stupid stuff, but like what's important in her mind. Right. And like just want to let her know, like, hey, you're allowed to feel that way. Right. It's just how you deal with it. Right. It's, do you want to feel better from it? Like, do you want to search for solutions? Or, like, is, like, that's, like, the realistic kick in the ass that a lot of us need when right. we're, like, no, having true. a pity party for ourselves. And, like, I'm definitely guilty of it. Right. <laughs> and, right. like, what did I need to hear when right. I was being right. that stupid teenager? <laughs> and, yeah. like, developing my coping skills and stuff. Like, I wished I had someone around to give me like things that help them things right that might work that might not work it's okay if they don't work right yeah right oh it's yeah. coming to that point uh you know where you when you're growing up and where you you have to sort of realize that the world's not gonna you know bend to your right <laughs> the yeah. way you wish it was oh, yeah. <laughs> You have to face the world as it is, not as, as you want it to be, or else yeah. you'll probably be miserable forever. Oh, yeah. You know? Um, so tell me a little about what you see in the future. Like, what what would you... Do you want to make a career of this? What, I what honestly do in, don't in know. It's a huge question mark at this point. I've been, like, I've gone kind of back and forth in my head about a lot of this. And, like, I will never be done playing music. Right. Absolutely right. not. Always going to write songs, always going to like play shows when I can, like at night, whatever. But I, at this point, I don't want to make a job out of it so that mm -hmm. it becomes like tiresome or that I have to, not that I don't want to work for it, but I feel that there's a lot of areas that would need some definite work. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And just that, like my particular style of music might not be something that I could take everywhere right right like can't show up to like a like a huge venue and go shut up i have an acoustic guitar and just, that is a right. shaky grace quote but uh right. no like like i do and plus like the part of me that like wants like the family life in the future and stuff like that right. like i want a day job i want to be able to play music and i want to be able to have a family and like that's right. kind of where i'm at right now and like i do still want to play and stuff but i know i wanted to do music therapy for oh, a yeah, long while yeah. and like that's it's super beneficial insurance doesn't want to pay for it like i do want right like that'd be a really nice way to sort of dovetail those things wouldn't it yeah like, um we get to play music but you're yeah you're getting absolutely paid and, and i know i did work and it's being and it's good work like it's helpful to people, yeah you know? for sure and i worked in a group home for uh developmentally delayed teens and i just i don't know if that's a setting that I could picture myself in for mm. the rest of my life, like doing CNA work and doing 
like right. DSP work and stuff like that. Right. Like I just that's tough there's work. a lot of value, but wow, it's it is hard. tough work. CNA yeah. is I'm talking about a thankless job. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So that's interesting. Like, um, do you could you ever picture yourself doing like as a songwriter in like the Nashville style, like not country music, but I mean just you know that style where it's like you're I'd love to go a songwriter like would, for other you know yeah. you're selling your songs to artists. Yeah, absolutely. That yeah. if I could if I could make a living off that, I want to sleep. Sign me up. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's a group that I am part of on uh, Facebook, and I am hesitant to join it because it is like a all genres, all types and stuff, and they want something pretty immediately, but they also want something pretty fully produced. Right. Um, right. Like a really polished version of something to yeah, give yeah. them, and you have to pay per month. Ooh. So I'm like, eh. while it's cool, and you know that like, ugh, like good people are gonna, they're like the chain smokers need like three options of someone to write with. I'm like. That's cool, but right. Oh yeah. man, I need a love song ASAP. Any kind of love song, I'm like right. pick me. That's me. Right. <laughs> no, that's a tough. It's it's hard to figure out. It's yeah. hard to find way. You know, revenue and opportunities and stuff. Though. Opportunities are difficult. <laughs> My mom was like, "You." I had I kind of talked her through it and like talked to her like the realist like the from a realistic point of view on that, and she's like. You know, Carrie Underwood's secretary probably like she could probably trust her to like keep an ear out for good songs. Like, <laughs> well, probably. I like how am I gonna get to Carrie Underwood's secretary? Right. Like, and like, probably we'll find the address. I'm like, it's probably not. thousands of people have <laughs> thought like, of that yeah. avenue too, and I imagine that Carrie Underwood's secretary probably gets a lot of people we coming tired up. Tired of it at this point. <laughs> like, it's like, well, you just gotta be persistent. I'm like. <laughs> yeah, it is a, it's a fun conversation. I like that one. Yeah, it's, yeah. We uh, when I was in high school, we had a band. Uh, mostly, we were doing like punk music. Yeah. And then when we started to get a little more serious, like after, right after high school, we started playing a lot more, and we we kind of did this. We called it industrial reggae, but it was sort of like this cool. mix of punk reggae kind of yeah. kind of clashy, you yeah. know. And I remember my. My, there were two brothers in the band, Pat and Dave, and uh, their dad, what a, this guy is such a character, you know, he was a sports medicine doctor, uh, he's retired now, but, and um, really creative guy, you know, just had all these, like, he would come up, he, he had invented some exercise system with like inner tubes, you know, now it's like really popular, this whole thing of like yeah. that kind of resistance uh -huh. thing. And he kind of came up with that whole thing and cool. made some money doing that. Yeah. But he, he would always have these sort of creative ways of going about things. Like he had this one, had this one uh, thing he had gone, he would gone through this stage of like, he didn't feel like he was reading enough books. So he would take, he developed this method where he would, he would tear out like the first chapter of yeah. the book and then staple it together and then do this with a whole bunch of books. So this was the idea was he could read a whole bunch of books at the same time, <laughs> just chapter by chapter. But then he kind of he dropped the idea at some point. So if you would go into his library, like all the books are missing, like the first fifty pages. <laughs> yeah. um, but he had this. He had a suggestion for us at one point, which uh, it made me think of it because you were talking about your mom's suggestions. Yeah. Like uh, he was like very sincere, and he was like, "You guys are so dedicated, and you you know you really." He's like, "My idea is you just you should just play country music." Until you get famous, because <laughs> you're really good, yeah. and then when you're famous, then you can do this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> we, oh, were, we were like, that. that's a good plan. Man. <laughs> Honestly, though, yeah. But I guess there's something to that, right? Like, I guess yeah. you could, you know, send me country music, with Karen with secretary. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then use the money you get to do whatever it is you want to do. Uh, but there's definitely, there's definitely like a good. Maybe this is just justification for not having success in the music business, <laughs> but but there's definitely uh, there's a there are good things about not having that dependency on something where you can do it with the freedom that you have. Yeah. Right. You're not like there's no pressure on you. There's no record company saying eh, this album's not 
you know, we really liked that last stuff you did. Right, yeah. You know, we want album number two to be, you know, part two of that album. Everyone really loved that album. (laughs) And I feel like that would be a tough, that'd be a hard thing to deal with. Um, And I think that kind of dynamic is why there's a lot of bands that kind of come and go. Yeah. I think a lot of times it's, it's because that follow-up is hard. Like, once you have... There's a freedom to anonymity. Yeah. Right? Like, Absolutely. you can write any song you want. Oh, yeah. It doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, people are going to like it or they're not, whatever. But you write some songs and you get popular with those songs. It's that follow-up. Like, all of a sudden, mm-hmm. there's all this pressure. Well, now what? You know, now what? Ugh. And I think it would be really hard to deal with that pressure. Yeah. I think bands that don't know how to deal with that pressure are the ones that are... They do this great album and then they disappear yeah. because they're like... I don't know what's next. <laughs> or else they're, you know, in a bad record contract and everyone's yeah. like, no, this is what we want. And then it turns out to be shit. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. What are we doing time-wise? We're doing perfect. Uh, why don't we just end with a couple songs or another song? Whatever you, what do you want to do? Yeah, yeah. I can do one more. Um, <laughs> it's always my closer to the bar song. All right. Yeah. So my oh, one. yeah, I remember this one. My one country song. Yeah. Nate Chartray, uh, he asked me, he was like, wait, that's yours? I thought that was a, I don't know what you say. It's a Neil Young song. That's oh, what okay. I thought it was. Like, <laughs> cool. <laughs> like, yeah, of course, no, I mean, it's not, but like, sure. See a sipping Jameson between the conversation with your friend. See you look my way again like the fifteenth time tonight. So I flip my hair once more as your friends are sure you tore the door. And I smile, I don't even know what for. Now you're sitting next to me. Cause you know I have a Sean Spockerman who chased their whiskey with you. You know I have been sitting here so long I have forgotten why I'm here. You can spill your guts to me, have a drink with me, sit right here with me, maybe. And baby, raise your glass, cheers to tonight. Drunk of Tennessee and sipping on some Hennessy. Take a shot of Crown with me and we'll make each other's night. Now we're hanging over till the morning. Tonight should have come with a big old morning. Baby, one that we have been ignoring, but it feels so right because you know I have a strong compliment who chased their whiskey with me. You know I have been sitting here so long I have forgotten why I'm here. You can spill your guts to me, have a drink with me, sit right here with me, baby. And baby, raise your glass, cheers to tonight. Cause you know, I came here alone and I just don't know why, but I don't really want to go home. I'll sit right here with my whiskey and beer and sing this song. Cause you know I have a soft spot for them who chase their whiskey with beer. You know I have been sitting here so long I have forgotten why I'm here. You can spill your guts to me, have a drink with me, sit right here with me, baby. And baby, raise your glass, cheers to tonight. And baby, raise your glass, cheers to tonight. <laughs> thing at the end there. Awesome. This is my country song. Right? Yeah. Okay, now I like that song. Yeah. I have no idea how anybody would have would have associated that to Neil Young. I, that doesn't sound like anything seen... like any Neil Young yeah. song I've ever heard. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> I have been trying to try just super sad on that. He's like, that's yours? I'm like, I don't know if he just like picked a famous person. Or right. Just, like... <laughs> you know, it's weird like as a I mean, I've been playing music for a really, really, really long time, so you know, you, you get, you 
been in front of a lot of different audiences yeah. and stuff. And it is interesting, like how people. It, it kind of this kind of goes back to uh, when I was talking about people create, you know, bringing meaning out that might not have been the intended yeah. meaning of your lyrics. Um, but the same with the sound. Like, there's things that I would have never. Like, people have come up and been like, "Oh yeah, it reminds me of so and so." They think yeah. of an artist, and I'm like, "Like, how do you?" That's like that's not like A to B. That's like A to Z. I don't even know <laughs> yeah. how you you know you would have thought that. Like, it's weird how people just have such different takeaways from what you're doing than, yeah. than what you what you think it is. The first time I saw you, I just immediately I heard that one song from Ice Age. It's uh, I'll have to find it. I don't need, like I don't know who it's by or what it's called, but there's <laughs> one song from Ice Age where like. It's they're like the montage song when they start like going on their journey to return the baby to uh -huh. like the settlers and whatever. But yeah, that's what it's it just that you. one, <laughs> that's one funny. sound. Yeah, uh, that's a trip. Well, Ashley Pyle, thank you so much for yeah, coming. Yeah, thank you so much. Was, I'm I'm so excited to be doing it this way. This is so much closer to what I envisioned the song project as yeah. to begin with, which is more conversation. And, mm -hmm and having it in that performance thing it was great for a while when, when there's a, a lot of songwriters there yeah. and it's really it, it's, and, it's, like. and it is good for what it is um but it, it it was so much more focused on performance and yeah. i really wanted it to be more about like conversations about yeah what we're doing the craft of what we're doing mm -hmm. um you guys make sure you go out to uh, the big dipper tomorrow night yes and check out the uh big doors are at seven six bucks the door oh that's what a deal. Super cheese. There's five that's bands. Like, right? And... That's like a little over a dollar per band. Oh, yeah. You guys are going to be hauling so it in. Uh, <laughs> albums are going to be 10 bucks. So nice. What's the album called? Uh, Chosen Road. Chosen Road. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Chosen it's good. We're Soul super excited. Is Soul Tree written as one word? Uh, or is it like Soul Tree? I mean, it's one on top like of Soul the other, so I think it's, uh, it's all one word. It's okay. S O U L T R E Soul. Right. Yeah. Not sultry. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. The sultry sounds of sultry. Yes. Right. Awesome. Well, yeah, thanks again for being our guest. Yeah, absolutely. Tune in next week for uh, Lindsay Johnston. Heck yeah. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll send you on your way. Thanks yeah. so much again. Cool. Yeah, yeah, thank you. All right.